Hi, this is Marsha Harris, back with you today to go over the summer resume. Well, not just the summer resume, but to walk through the process for creating your resume. As you remember, or you may remember, we met a few weeks ago, um, and during that session, we talked about different ways of finding job opportunities, and one of the things that we discussed during the session was your resume. Now, in order to find a job, for the most part, you'll need a resume. So you wanna make sure that your resume is as professional looking as possible. So what we'll do is go through the same resume that we um, used during the presentation a couple of weeks ago. I'll just walk you through the process of putting one together. So for the next half hour or so, we'll be talking about this. Now, let's go to the top. As you can see, the resume is for a young man named John Smith. John has left some space up top of the resume. His contact information is not way up top, but he does have a margin up there. So you wanna make sure to leave enough spacing up there. I'm not sure exactly how much that is, but that's probably what the default setting is. Next, you'll put your contact information, <clears throat> meaning your name, your address, your cell phone or your phone number, and your email address. So first name, last name, no need to put Mr. or Miss unless you have a name that is unisex or something that would not be very obvious to the reader what gender you are. So in that case, you'll wanna put Mr., Ms., et cetera. Now you'll have your street address, your city and state, then you'll have your, con your cell phone or your home phone, whichever is the best to reach you. And then you'll have your email address. One caution about the email address is you want to make sure that you use a professional, let me say that again, a professional email address. What I mean by that is your first name, last name at your email provider. Nothing cute, nothing funny, nothing you know, nothing other than very basic, very professional. A word to the wise on your cell phone. You want to make sure that your cell phone or voicemail, whatever voicemail you have, it is professional. No music, no talking, definitely no foul language, nothing like that. Just a very basic, you have reached. John Smith, I'm unable to take your call. Please leave me a message and I will call you at my earliest convenience. Something like that. Next, looks like John has skipped a line or two. You want to <clears throat> just make sure that you have, you know, that that looks good to the eye. You don't want to have too much space there, but a line or two should be okay. The more text you have on your resume, you'll probably have less space there but you can adjust it so that it looks good in the end. But the next section he has is qualifications. You can call that section qualifications or even skills. And first thing he has is a sentence that says highly or starts off with highly focused and responsible high school student. And he goes on to talk about his, his skills and his work ethic. I would encourage you to use a sentence like that to describe yourself. You can include any technical or artistic or any type of uh, information about yourself. For example, if you were, if you had a job, you could put professional administrative assistant, highly adept at, and then you would list your skills. That's just an example. But since you're a high school student, keep it basic. You can use the same text, but definitely use skills that are um, that are in line with you and your personality. You want to put, well, if you are going to break out the skills like John did, which is a good idea, you want to make sure you use bullet points. He lists communications, teamwork, mathematics, and technical proficiencies. All of these are good skills. Um, several of these would be useful in just about any work environment. For example, communications and skill work, I'm sorry, in teamwork. 
I don't care if you work by yourself, you will be a part of a team. You will probably have one other person who could be your boss or supervisor that you are communicating with on a fairly frequent basis. You and that person could be the team. So you would be using your communications and skill work, communications and teamwork skills in that environment. In terms of mathematics, if you're strongly, if you have strong math skills, I would go ahead and include it, particularly if you don't have very many job skills or, or very many work experiences. Math skills can be used as well with technical proficiencies. Whether you have um, a lot of work skills or work experience or not, I would include your technical proficiencies for sure, particularly since if you're going to be working in an environment where you're going to use some sort of technology, whether it is Microsoft Office, uh, Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, or internet, something, I, I would list it there. Next is education. I would include that if you're in high school or in college. As you get older, if you've graduated um, from college and worked a couple of years, you can put your education more towards the bottom. But for now, I would include that section in both and put your high school name, city and state, and your GPA. If your GPA is a good one, like John Smith, if it's not, don't include it. Don't worry about it. No one's going to ask you, or they probably won't ask you what your GPA is. Um, so it's not necessary to put, but if it's very strong, then by all means include it. If you have recently graduated from college, I would put your year of graduation there as well. And if you graduated with any honors and so forth. If you're still in high school or a recent high school graduate, graduate, you can put, don't put it if you're still in high school, but you can include it if you have recently graduated. Next, he has activities. Honor roll, National Honor to Society, co-captain of the swim team, drama club, math tutor. Include your activities, especially if you don't have a lot of work experience. And that would be the case, would likely be the case with someone who is in high school or maybe early college years. So I would include them. If you've been on the honor roll, if you've got National Honor Society, swim team, any sports, anything, do put it there. Don't think that your activities are not um, going to be considered worthwhile by any employer. Employers do look at your overall experiences. They will understand that as a high school student or early college student, you probably wouldn't have a whole heck of a lot of work experience. So these activities do help. Now, a word to the wise, some employers do look at things differently. So where it may not be necessary for one, another employer may think it very important. So I would include it. Another reason why including your activities would be, would be wise is if you're using this resume for college admissions, or for a scholarship application, or as a part of an application into some program. There, your, um, the admissions committee would be interested in the activities that you have participated in, particularly your college admissions committees. They're very interested in those, so you want to make sure you have that stuff or have that information included. So let's go back from the top. Have your name, address, phone, and email up top. In this environment or in this example, it's listed in bold. I would go ahead and list it in bold as well. Your email should be professional. Your voicemail should be professional. Next se section is qualifications. You can have that uh, one, two, or even three liner that kind of describes you in a nutshell and then break out specific skills or qualifications in bullet points. Some qualifications that are pretty universal, pretty much universal to any employer are communications and teamwork and your technical proficiencies. So I would include those no matter where you apply. Next section is your education. Include your high school name or college name, 
City State and your GPA, if it is a good one, and also your year of graduation, if you have graduated. Next section is your activities. Be sure to list the activities you have been involved in, um, any positions of leadership that you have held, for example, co-captain co of the boys swim team. If you were president of the student council, list that up there as well. And um, again, these sections may, their level of importance may vary from one employer to another, but I wouldn't let that keep me from including it, especially if you're using this resume for a scholarship application or or um, application to any program. So that was just a recap of the top part of your resume. Now let's get into the meat of your jobs, or the meat and potatoes of your jobs. The experience section. You want to make sure you have that bold and you want to make sure you list your positions with the most recent position first. That's called a reverse chronological resume or your resume will be in reverse chronological order and it's actually called a chronological resume there are different types of resumes but the ones that you should be most concerned with as a college or high school student or the one would be the chronological resume or that's the type you should probably use so you would have your first position listed or your the, the company the city and state your position, and then the years that you've worked at the company. Next, you'll want to have several bullet points that list the experiences or the duties that you've performed on the job. So let's walk through John's experience list. He's got greeted customers and determined their specific needs by following up and generating repeat business by encouraging customers to return. That's a pretty long sentence. If you can keep it very basic, do so. But if you find that you have to have more experience or it needs to be a little bit more detail to the sentence, by all means do it, but make sure it is clear what you have performed on the job. Next he says, successfully sell smart plans, credit cards, applications. Next, maintain an accurate cash draw of over 1,500 packaged customer purchases, and then finally, effectively utilize resources. One thing John did in this resume is he quantified what or how much money he handled on the job. This is important to include when you're applying for positions that involve some level of cash handling, like your cashier or sales, something to that effect. It shows that you have experience handling cash, and quite honestly, the more cash you've handled, the more level of responsibility you've had on that position in general. So I would include that. I would be specific there about it. Also, if you have any accomplishments on that job, for example, if you were able to sell, I don't know, if you sold outsold any of your colleagues. You won an award for selling the most subscriptions of some sort of service. I would include that there as well. Next, he has his volunteer position with the Habitat for Humanity. Again, name of the company, city and state, his title, and his dates of employment. Now, if you notice, he was with Habitat for Humanity, but he was a volunteer. This was not actually a paid experience, but nevertheless, it was experience. So you want to make sure you include that also. He has the years that he worked there and has a synopsis. He's just got a couple of bullet points about the position and what he, what he did. Now, he says he teamed with fellow church youth group members to contribute to Habitat for Humanity projects. He worked on construction teams for, to erect new housing for low-income families. And then he's got conceptualized and coordinated funding for Christmas Bazaar and raised over 5K. 
There we go with that number again. So do include it. Now, in this case, he doesn't have as many bullet points as in the first job, but that, that's okay. It's not a problem. He could probably break down that first sentence into another couple of bullet points, and um, it would have been just fine. I think it's important that you include or you list your experiences in bullet points because it's a lot easier to read than a whole sentence. And that's the case for anyone, whether you're in high school, college, or even an adult working. You want to make this as painless for the recruiter as possible because they may be looking at tons of other resumes and they need to be able to quickly identify what it is that you did and the skills that you have that are applicable to their position. Now, let me say this. If you've had two jobs at one time, for example, if John worked for Habitat for Humanity and for Richard's computer store at the same time, or if they overlapped, you would want to put the most recent job first and then the one, the older one before it. So they, they one he could have started this year and one he started the year before. So you want to keep the most recent one, as I said before, and then the previous job before it. It's okay if they both have the same end date. Next, John has his trumpet player role listed. He says, middle and high school bands, Washington, D.C., trumpet player. That is okay. Um, again, you want to make sure that you have all of your experiences listed. This, although it's not a paid position, it is a position where he held some sort of leadership, some sort of role. He was a trumpet player. And I would include that on your resume if you don't have any other paid or volunteer work experience. Again, he has his years of employment or his years involved as a trumpet player. And he has about three bullet points listed there. He talks about his concert, uh, participated in concert and marching bands each year, attended regular rehearsals three times a week, promptly dressed and prepared instruments for concert performances. So he's listing the, the experience. I'm sorry, his duties. And what this does, although it wasn't paid, it shows that he has experience in organizing, in preparing, in ensuring that his concert performances were accurately set up. I mean, there's a lot that he's done just as a trumpet player. This would be especially helpful if he's also looking for something or a position involved in some sort of music or entertainment field. Don't discount any of the experiences that you've had. And he ends it there. That's the, the final section of his resume. If your resume spills over, if you've got more work experience than John does and you find that you're going into two pages, that's fine. Continue to list your experiences. And this may not be applicable for someone in high school, but for someone in college or even a recent graduate, you may have several years of experience. That is okay. You know, typically it's said that you should go back 10 years of experience, no more than 10 years of experience on a resume. There are different schools of thought on that. Again, as you get older, as you have worked longer, you'll have more to put on the resume and you'll just go ahead and continue to add, but I would not go more than two pages. So let's go back and do a recap of the resume. I know we, I talked about the beginning part, but I want to circle back and go through the entire uh, form since we've, we've gotten to the end of it. So in case you missed the last recap, here we go. Make sure you leave enough space up top before you include your contact information. That is, um, you'll probably just leave the default spacing up there. Then you'll put your name, your address, 
street address, city and state and zip code. Your contact, best contact phone number for you, which is probably your cell phone or it could be your home phone and your email address, professional email address, professional voicemail. You're gonna skip a line or two. In bold, you will put your qualifications or your skills. You'll label that section, qualifications or skills. And then you'll include a one to three liner about your qualifications, skills, and experiences. Then, this is optional, but you can put a list of bullet point um, or bullet pointed list of, of skills that you have. Communications, technical proficiencies, teamwork, mathematics, you can include that there. Next, you'll have your education and you want to put your local high school or your your high school your city and state and your gpa if your gpa is a good one you also want to include your year of graduation and if you're a recent college graduate or even a college student you can include your major there also next section title activities you can Make it bold as well, list your activities there, and make sure you identify if you've had any positions of leadership right in that section. After that, you'll have your experience section and the title is in bold, and then your jobs in a reverse chronological order, meaning most recent job first. And you'll have a set of bullet points about your duties or that, that um, identify your duties under that job. You want to quantify any numbers wherever you can, meaning quantify the number of employees you had working under you or the amount of money you were handling on a daily basis on the job. You want to include that there. You can include volunteer information, particularly if you don't have much paid work experience. Volunteer is experience, just wasn't paid, and that's okay. Going to include that. Again, name, city and state, your title, your um, the, the days you were employed, not the days, but your um, years of employment, and then the bullet point list of experiences. Try to keep everything very basic, very to the point. And then also you can include any, such as this young man did, any other extracurricular activities where, where you had some level of responsibility, especially again, if you don't have a whole lot of work experience. Now, if you've noticed, the resume is not entirely in bold. There are sections in bold like your name and address, that top section, and the sections that identify, or the identifiers are bold, but the rest of it should not be bold. It should be, again, easy to read. And if you have everything bold, it'll be too difficult to read. Also, you want to make sure that you're using a, a, a good font size. You don't want to use 14, 15 point. You can use, 11 point or 12 point. I wouldn't go any under anything, I'm sorry, under 11 point for anything on the resume because it may be too difficult to read as well as anything bigger than 12 because that can also be difficult to read. I would stick with the basic font such as Arial or um, Times New Roman those are probably the most frequently used resume fonts. And you can use that same resume for your, I'm sorry, that same font for your cover letter as well. You, at the end of your resume, can include a section called, at the end, the section called, um, or that says your references are available upon request. I mean, that's kind of obvious. And they're going to ask you for the, for the references, whether you have them, that section listed there or not. But that kind of helps to show that your resume has ended, that, that, that there's nothing more 
behind it. And it does at least identify to the employer that you do have some references. I think that we've pretty much covered everything here. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me through It Takes Two. Um, outside of that, I wish you the best of luck and I know that you have everything in you to craft a, to successfully craft a resume that shows how much of a good employee you are and how much of an asset you would be to that organization. I wish you the best. You take care.